Howdy, folks. I'm Braddy Bismuth, bitterly biting bland bread. I'm Chucky. And here's more horrifying bland bread and Chucky for us to bite. You're not biting Chucky. Chucky bit the dust, but not the bland bread. Let's get started. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for asking my wife to help me with the kids? My wife, Lisa, and I are both 30, and we have kids under five, three kids under five. I work full time while Lisa is a stay at home mom with an Etsy shop where she makes and sells jewelry as their supplemental income. A while back, I received a nice bonus, and after a bit of discussion, it was decided that I would use the bonus for myself. I managed to stay within the budget, but I booked myself a two week vacation for Hawaii. Of course, this meant Lisa had the kids at home full time while I was gone. When I returned, Lisa was exhausted, and I initially agreed to take the kids for the afternoon on Sunday so that she could have some time to herself and unwind. How magnanimous! <laughs> my cousin ended up inviting us to a barbecue that same day, and my cousin is one of my best friends, and I knew that the other childhood friends would be there. Lisa wasn't sure about going, but I told her that everyone would be happy to see her and the kids. Plus, I would wash them so that she could relax and have a drink or two. The day of the barbecue, the kids were out of control, crying, screaming, fighting, not listening or following directions. It was impossible to have a conversation or catch up with my cousin or friends. I repeatedly walked over to Lisa and I asked her to give me a hand with the kids. Each time she declined and said that I agreed to watch them and this was her downtime. After another hour of chaos, I end up yelling across the yard, for once, can you please get off your butt and help me with the kids? Just once is all I'm asking for. Lisa stomped over to me and started whisper yelling that I was breaking my promise to let her have time to relax. She didn't want to be here and feels that I basically made her go. I tried explaining that these are people that I don't see very often and to please not make a scene. Unfortunately, a few people overheard us and caught a few comments about Lisa being lazy mom who only wanted to pawn off the kids on me and she's taking advantage of me. Lisa burst into tears and yelled at the people standing nearby that had made the comments and told them all to go away told them to basically go away and took the car and left. She returned a few hours later to pick me up and the kids. We didn't speak to each other on the drive home. Later that night, I tried talking to her that the kids were having a rough day and I just needed her help for a bit so that I could finish a conversation and would have taken them right back. Lisa objected that it wasn't fair that she had the kids alone for two weeks while I was in Hawaii. She also said that it's not what upset her the most, it's how I phrased it and what I said and how I let people insult her and didn't immediately jump up to her defense. I told Lisa that those people don't know her like I do and have no idea how hard she works to take care of the kids, our house, and run her Etsy shop. Nor did I have the time to react before she ended up leaving. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yeah, I think OP is being a major jerk here. I mean, dude goes away on a two-week vacation. Like, does he think the kids were well-behaved the entire two weeks he was gone? He must think that. Like, no, the kids were probably monsters because they're under the age of five, and uh, your wife dealt with it on her own. All she asked was one afternoon. Yeah, I mean, one afternoon... And you couldn't even honor or respect that one afternoon. It's and pretty ridiculous. Then he complains at her for making a scene when he's the one who's like, could Yelling you help me for the, just yeah. once as if she doesn't do anything and doesn't stand up for her. Well, and that's the big problem I have here is that he literally yelled across the uh, lawn and he's now being like, you're the one who's making a scene, even though he's literally the one who made the scene. So I don't know what this guy is saying, but he's like, don't make a scene. I already did that work for you. Right. It's like he's he's just so self-centered and I hate it. So like, OP, if you want to fix things, first of all, apologize profusely for your wife and actually give her time off where you do not try and pawn the kids off on her. Maybe like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, ideally two weeks. But, you know, even if you have to even if you have to do it in chunks over the course of several weekends, like make sure she actually gets the downtime she needs because being a stay at home mom to three children under five 
is like a huge, huge time and sense of job. Yeah, well, and then on top of that, she also has her Etsy shop, mm -hmm. and that's supplying a supplemental income to the household, mm -hmm. which I think is an important note. And I also don't know how I feel about him taking a two-week vacation away period. Right, and using the entire money from his bonus to, instead of using it for the household, because his wife is again making it so he can have the job he does. She's doing important work and he just like, as eh, my money, I'm going to go on this two week vacation. Yeah. And I mean, everyone needs some downtime, mm -hmm. certainly. I'm not saying that you don't, but I think that the way he approached this whole situation, she was very, you know, it seems like she was very nice here to allow this whole vacation, this whole trip. Right. And I mean, allow in the most, loose terms right well i get the sense that she feels like she can't say no to him and if that's a situation there that's not a good thing in the yeah. relationship so if this is a situation where op your wife can't say no to you and you're out here basically doing these things even though she doesn't really want you to then maybe marriage counseling is a good place to start for this relationship yeah and also make sure to talk to every single person who was at the party explain to them that you had abandoned her for two weeks yeah that you had promised that she would have the afternoon off and that you went back on your word well and then even after she left he didn't clarify things right he had the entire rest of the time to clarify <laughs> and instead everyone thinks that she's a terrible mom and it's just he, he just feels so self-centered it just i hate it but these people don't know you like, like i know you and it's like well <laughs> then tell them make them see it yeah so let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck all right folks and our next letter is titled am i a jerk for replacing any property of mine that my wife lends out or gives away from our travel savings i love my wife very much and we are from two different cultures. In hers, if a person needs something that you have, you give it to them. In mine, if you need something, you get a job, get paid, and you buy what you need. While I earn most of our income, my wife runs a day home and takes care of our kids and the house. We take our money, we pay our bills, we put some away for emergencies, our retirement, kids' educations, etc. We also keep an account for traveling and visiting her family or paying for her mom and dad to visit us. My wife has given away a bunch of my stuff because her family needed it. She gave my trekking backpack to one of her cousins because he needed a backpack. She could have bought him a $30 Costco backpack, but instead she gave away my $400 backpack, which promptly was stolen. The last straw was my laptop. I was away for the weekend at a friend's wedding that she did not want to attend. Her auntie was visiting and said that my wife's brother needed a computer for schoolwork. Since all I ever did was play games on it, she gave it to her brother for university. I tried to get it back and she said that it would be rude. I explained that the only reason that all she ever saw me do was play video games was because I was at home when I was playing video games. When I leave in the morning and I take it with me, it goes to earn money for doing a job that I'm paid for. She said that I didn't have to talk to her like she was dumb, but she refused to ask for it back. I replaced it with money from the travel fund, which means that we will not be seeing her parents this Christmas. She's mad. She said that I took money that belonged to both of us to buy something, and I asked her where the money should come from. Should I take it out of our retirement, our kids' education? Does she want to put off replacing the furnace with winter almost here? I said that I could cancel that if she wanted. She said that I could have just put it on the credit card. I asked her to explain where the money to pay the credit card would come from. She thinks that I'm treating her like an idiot. I think that she needs to stop giving my stuff away. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? No, I don't think OP's being the jerk here. I mean, yeah, sure, it should be joint, but she shouldn't be giving away your stuff without your consent yeah like, if she wants to give her own belongings to her family sure she's welcome to but she doesn't get to give away other people's possessions well and then on top of that op needs a computer to earn money mm -hmm. right so they won't have an income if op doesn't have a computer to earn that income yeah and so i mean I understand that she wants to help people, but there are other ways to help people than giving away someone else's stuff. Yeah, I think that it was really inappropriate for her to give away his laptop of all things. And I understand that she thought that this maybe was just something that he used to play video games, but still, you consult somebody before you give away their stuff, mm -hmm. like the hiking backpack. And again, 
he could have they could have bought something cheaper for them and the laptop probably they could have gotten a cheaper laptop for the college it's not like right. you need a high powered laptop for a university right so i think that the wife is in the wrong here i think that she needs to be more respectful of op stuff right and i mean he has to replace it somehow and the travel fund seems like the most natural place to take it from yeah Everything else, it sounds like the money is allocated to important things, you know, and I'm not that travel to see family isn't important, but again, especially where she's the one who's giving away all his stuff that he has to replace, it makes more sense. Yeah, but let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our last letter is titled, Will I be a jerk if I tell my fiance's dad the truth about what his dad did during World War II? My fiancé is a 29-year-old female, and I'm a 28-year-old male, and we're engaged to be married next spring. I'm currently a grad student, finishing my master's in history, and she's an RN. One of my favorite pastimes is to research World War II, specifically the European theater. About six months ago, my fiancé's dad and uncle approached me about digging into their father's tour of duty during World War II. Apparently, he was in Europe after Normandy invasion, but never spoke about his experiences with any of his family. Both he and his wife have passed away, and my fiancé's dad and uncle are curious about his experiences there. After my fiancé's grandfather passed away, they didn't find any of his old military gear. The only information that they had to go on was the unit and division that he was in. But I had his name and rank with knowledge of his unit and division. I was able to find his name on the unit roster and track the movement and action reports of his unit. I didn't find any specific citations of him specifically, but he was a private and that's not uncommon. However, I did find the division that he was in was involved in one of the most controversial events performed by the U.S. military in Europe. I won't go into specifics, but his unit was involved in a horrific event in a place called Lippic, Germany. This event is now considered a war crime by many historians. It's an event that I was aware of, but had not dug into until now. When I discovered this, I talked to my fiance about it. She did not take it very well. She got very defensive about how her grandfather would never do anything like that and how kind and gentle he was. I told her that I'm not saying that her grandfather did do any of these things, but that the unit that he was in was there and this event happened. I have no specific information on anything that he did or didn't do, but since his unit was involved in this event, it's at least likely that he was there and possibly witnessed or was involved in what happened. She pretty much begged me not to tell her dad and uncle about this. She said that she's upset and brokenhearted about it and it would do the same or worse to her uncle and dad. She basically told me to lie to them in order to save face for her grandpa. I don't feel comfortable with that because if her dad or uncle decides to do their own research and finds the truth, they will know that I lied and I don't want to do that. We are supposed to see their family in a couple of weeks, and I know that her dad and uncle are going to be there, and they're going to ask about my research. I don't want to lie to them because I feel that it's wrong to admit uncomfortable facts from history. But I also know that if I tell them the truth, my fiancé will be upset, and that I will have no idea how her dad or uncle will take it. I know that they will probably ask me to do the research in hope of finding some lost heroic truth about their dad, but I found the opposite. I feel obligated to tell them the truth, but my fiancé wants me to lie. All right, folks, what do you think? Yeah, I think he would be the jerk if he told this because you don't know that it's true. It's not like you found his name specifically tied to this event. Yeah. And from what I read in the comments, it sounds like it was a very small percentage of the unit, like 10 to 20, uh, 20 to 25 soldiers who were involved. It says a good chance that he wasn't involved. Yeah, I think that you, when you research history, you have to research the whole historic picture. And if that can't give you any definitive answers, that you can't draw sweeping conclusions from it. And why tell someone about a traumatic event when you don't even know? Like, again, it yeah. would be one thing if... Opie had found out that this man specifically was involved in this Oh, yeah. Event. Like, if they had actually had a historical record and his name was involved in this, then, I mean, I think that would be a completely different matter where you would have a much more difficult moral quandary at that point in time. Right. And, you know, there may be different alternatives there. But, you know, with this situation, I think you could easily just tell the truth, which is that you didn't, weren't able to find specific information about his involvement. Yeah. 
it's a difficult situation, but it doesn't implicate the grandfather in this. And I think that OP could even explain that the unit was involved in a situation, but given how many people that were there, it's unlikely that their grandfather was involved in this specific action. Yeah, I mean, I think it's best just to leave that out. Like, it doesn't seem like they're do like, they seem to have gone to OP because they don't know how to do their own research. So I think this whole bit about, well, if they did their own research, it's probably just like, yeah, maybe if they hire like a private investigator or something, a, a genealogist or something. But, yeah. I mean, I think it's best just to be kind of ambiguous not like you know tell them the facts but don't go into details yeah i don't think you need to lie but i also don't think that you need to go into the gory details of everything there so let me know what you folks think though so anyhow take care and good luck all right folks it is tea time grab your beverages of choice i've got some tea right here amber has a jovial bob Stein joke for us what is the ghost's favorite tv game show the ghost's favorite TV game show you might think was like something that rhymes with ghost or like the specter of something something, but it isn't. It's the price is right because everyone likes the price is right. It's squeal of fortune. Squeal of fortune. No, it's the price is right. <laughs> and uh thank you. I can't remember again who suggested Chucky, but thank you for the costume idea. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Amber did have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. And if I remember, I'm going to post a picture of our graveyard here. Yes, yes. I just took a picture today of it for you all. So. And uh, tomorrow is release day for oh, my yeah. book. So oh. Amber's short story is being released in a collection of short stories. And so tomorrow that book is actually getting published. So if you want to read Amber's short story, I'll be posting a link to it. So uh and again this will be an amazon affiliate link so if you purchase the book through that affiliate link amber will get royalties from it she doesn't get royalties otherwise and i have earl gray all right folks that's all the time we have for today thank you so much for watching happy friday junior happy friday junior thanks to amber for joining me today thank you for having me amber we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance and please have it in the form of a catchphrase for a bad husband. <laughs> Don't worry, I promise I'll watch the kids someday. <laughs> that would be a catchphrase for a bad husband. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!